Hey, good morning. Welcome to Kevin Stoda on the porch. And sometimes I take time to read you on the porch, uh, important suggestions for our future. Today we're talking about what to do uh, next time, next time we have a pandemic. How can we make America pandemic proof? Um, and this one comes from uh, Mother Jones uh, from last month. And uh, so again, the topic is how to make America pandemic proof. Uh, it's now abundantly clear that despite repeated warnings from experts, the United States simply wasn't ready for the coronavirus. So how do we fix that COVID-19 has been broken? Uh, how do we fix a system that's been broken? In an online Mother Jones series, we've asked experts from a wide range of disciplines one question. What are the most important steps we can take to make sure we're better prepared next time there's ever a pandemic or a virus that comes through like this? Um, and go ahead and um, I will share some of the different ideas different people have shared with me. And also, I've heard through Mother Jones here. Uh, Tom Frieden, uh, former head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says, unmuzzle the experts. Um, blaming the CDC is like blaming a person who has been bound and encased in cement for failing to swim. That's a pretty good me metaphor. Blaming the CDC is like blaming a person who's been bound and encased in cement for failing to swim. CDC has not communicated well because they have not been allowed to communicate well. On January 26, CDC vaccine head Nancy Messonier said, uh, we have to act. We have to behave as if this is a pandemic. That was on January 26. On February 26, she said disruption to our everyday lives may be severe. This was exactly the right thing to say at exactly the right time. The issue is not so much why didn't the CDC do what it was supposed to do, but why wasn't CDC allowed to do what it could have done? Good suggestion. Unmuzzled experts. Uh, another person, uh, Nahid uh, Badalia, uh, infectious disease physician and medical director of a special pathogens unit at Boston Medical Center. He says uh, we need to prepare better for the worst. Uh, since Ebola, hospitals got some infectious disease training and awareness and infrastructure training into place, but it was an infrastructure that was looking at a disease that causes a small cluster of cases with high mortality. Not a disease that causes tons of cases, but not as high mortality. A three bedroom bio uh, containment unit is not going to help you in a case like COVID where you have hundreds of patients coming in. Um, we may be ready for Ebola, but we're not ready for avian influenza, which is the equivalent of what we're seeing with COVID right now. We need greater surge capacity at every level and it can't be created during the pandemic. It needs to be consistent. It has to be devoid of attachment to a political cycle. In other words, um, we need to uh, stop the just-in-time system in our current medication, uh, our medical approach to health in America. I heard uh, several lifelong Republicans who agree that the time to stop messing with uh, uh, lack of health care with all has ended and we need to have some health care solution. And uh, so far, the Democrats are the only one on the table for this. And we need more Americans to be involved in, in this um, stop of, uh, having just in time health insurance policies or whatever, uh, health care centers, hospitals. Okay. Doc um, David R. Williams is a professor of public health and chair of the Department of Social Work and Behavioral Sciences at Harvard uh, Chan School of Public Health. He says, step back and think of who is the most vulnerable to COVID. And he says, it's invest in healthy kids. It's those people who, based on their job, based on their economic circumstances, based on where they live, are unable to take part in the recommended strategies to protect themselves. That's children again. If we change the underlying conditions, we will dramatically improve health. I'll give you one example. The Absidarian Project in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, that took four children, 
98% African American and randomized by randomized them to an early childhood program. They went to their program birth through age five and they get or got high quality nutrition, medical care, intellectual stimulation. They've now been followed to their mid thirties. In other words, they're 30 plus years old. Those who got the program compared to the control group had markedly lower cardiometabolic uh, risk. Looking at their blood pressure, obesity levels uh, were lower. Uh, other markets of heart disease, they're doing a lot better too. These kids of initiative produce uh, great economic productivity, produce better health. They are good for the economy. They save society money. Why aren't we doing more? Okay, so invest in healthy kids. That's a great way to look at it. Now, let's look at this one. Uh, Uche Blackstock, he's an emergency um, medicine physician and founder of Advanced Health uh, Equity. There's a study that came out in the Journal of American Medical Association that showed that even though black Americans were disproportionately impacted by the coronavirus, we actually had less knowledge of how the virus was transmitted. I think it's obvious that we need more nuanced approach with black communities. Given the history of distrust of healthcare by black Americans, it's even more important what does that look like. Uh, you know, black Americans were subjected to unknown testing over the years, uh, experimentation, and uh, bad medicine. So. Uh, their distrust is high. So what does that change need to be? That would look like making sure that you have individuals who are trusted in each and every community involved. Be the ones that are doing the messaging. You need these people because usually people who are from the community that they work in, they know the community well. Um, Ashi uh, Ja is the faculty director of Harvard Global Health institution of the billions of dollars that the national institute of health gives out infectious diseases in general have been pretty small part of our nih plan people make the argument and rightly so that cancer kills more people uh heart disease kills more people well one of the things that kill can kill millions of people in short order is a pandemic and it's the area where we invest the least so i would put a lot more money into scientific enterprise if this in, into this scientific enterprise if this had been a true novel virus that we hadn't encountered and hadn't done that research we would have been much further behind than we are now so luckily we had done some research but uh if we had done better research it would have helped us that's what um the faculty director says uh, connect uh, public health agencies is another suggestion. Will, William Schaffner, he's a professor of uh, preventive medicine and infectious diseases at Vanderbilt University. He says um, state health departments are all independent of each other and independent of the feds. Then within each state, there are city and county health departments who are often separate. It's an extraordinary, crazy quilt of organizations. If you and I had accounts in the Chase Bank and we wanted to transfer money to their branch in Singapore, within minutes, the money would be in Singapore now. We have to work towards the bank concept in our healthcare system. That everybody and everything is integrated, operates according to certain standard and in much more timely fashion. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, we have such a federalist approach to health care that it is killing us, is what is mentioned there. Um, next, keep rural hospitals alive. Even before the coronavirus, one in four rural American hospitals was at risk of closing. Now that their finances are even more tenuous since they have been forced to pause lucrative elective procedures, um, we need to look at the issue. Last year, health care officials in Pennsylvania through Rural hospitals a lifeline. Instead of unpredictable reimbursements, insurers and federal government gave hospitals a regular global budget. In return, hospitals agreed to work to improve care, such as increasing access to primary care and helping patients manage chronic uh, conditions. A 
team of researchers from Harvard and the University of Pittsburgh want to now expand this program to other states in, in America. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the fragility of financing these hospitals on a fee-for-service model, they write. This new approach could make rural communities healthier and stronger before the next pandemic. Okay, so this whole article is talking not just about this pandemic, it's talking about in the future how to fix the system. And that's a pretty good suggestion. Keep all the rural hospitals alive by having them go on global budgets rather than on how fast they can earn money per patient. Uh, train, uh, another suggestion is to train Native American doctors. In June, uh, five indigenous tribal nations had higher COVID-19 rates than any state in America. Dr. Donald Warren, an Oglala Lakota professor at the University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Science, believes that recruiting more indigenous health professionals is key to improving pandemic response since reservations suffer from chronic shortages of doctors. Uh, Warren uh, directs UND's Indians into Medicine program, which has trained 250 doctors so far. With more federal funding for Indian Health Services, Warren hopes to double the program's capacity soon. It's going to require a generation of good policy to make up for generations of bad. Uh, another suggestion, of course, is shrink the jails. Nobody has invented a more effective vector for transmitting disease than putting people in a city jail. A former commissioner of New York City's Rikers Island said in March, Early in the pandemic, courts scrambled to release inmates, most of whom were locked up only because they couldn't make bail. Research suggests that the spread of coronavirus could have been slowed if they had not been locked up at all. One model from April shows that without drastic measures to shrink jail populations, official death projections would double. As of June, studies in Chicago and Milwaukee found links between incarcerations and COVID-19 case numbers. I think it, by now it's obvious, you see it in all the press, and are especially the so-called illegal immigrants who are jailed uh, are being affected adversely, and their children too. Uh, finally, uh, another suggestion is Christina Fullers, an environmental epidemiologist at uh, Georgia State University. She says, use trees as PPE. Um, she's found that people who live where air pollution is low are more resilient when they're exposed to coronavirus compared to people with chronic exposure to dirty air. Planting barriers of trees next to the highways that cut through neighborhoods would not only look pretty, they actually have been shown to reduce pollution, she says. We can't necessarily remove a highway, but we can reduce the impact that it has on the neighboring community. Um, we have a nice parkway here in Kansas City, and uh, but I could see several areas around uh, the metropolitan area of Kansas City that could they could still plant trees. Um, finally, uh, I said finally a second time. Uh, talk nerdy to me is a suggestion. Laurel uh, Bristol of Emory University says the public health bodies tasked with understanding and controlling this pandemic are putting out information, but not in a way that's accessible accessible to most people. If you aren't reaching people on their level on social media accounts, other accounts with large followings are going to fill that void. And that's how a lot of misinformation gets spread. Well, and it also gets intentionally misspread by uh, political parties who would rather you uh, fight each other than to solve problems. Uh, also by Russian and other bots or trolls who want to spread misinformation in America and, and bring it down. Uh, to make a long story short, I'd like you to read articles. I encourage you to read articles and thank you for letting me share how we can do better by the next pandemic. Um, times now, we need to make the healthcare system better and we these are great suggestions. Any comments? Uh, please share to like Kevin's story channel if you like a story like this and also um, be sure to help uh, others in this time of need as you can. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Have a good day. Kevin Stoda from the porch.